Hello once again good people of YouTube, my name is Azki and I've just spent the last half hour trying to figure out a brand new intro line because I'm quite frankly getting tired of this one, it's becoming a bit cringy. I'm sure I'll find out how to do a better one in the near future, but anyway, welcome back to the series and in this episode we'll be covering all of the trophies in Marvel's Spider-Man's DLC, starting with the very first one here titled The Heist. Now unlike my other guys for some of the previous videos and especially for the ones based on the main set of trophies for this game, I can assure you right now that this guide as well as the next two that are followed by it are not at all by any means going to be hours long. I've made that promise in a few other videos and I didn't quite follow through. Some of them eventually ended up stretching between just under an hour to, well, nearly as long as a full length feature film. Jesus Christ! Now these DLCs for Spider-Man don't have as many trophies as the main game. We're only going to be looking at 9 of them in this DLC today and then 7 of them for each of the subsequent DLCs, which won't stretch anywhere near as long as the last guides. Not to say that I'm not going to try to run through this entire video without all the necessary detail that I think's needed. I'm just going to try not to waffle on about nonsensical shit like I've seen to do in a lot of other guides and the video ends up becoming nothing more than pure chatting really. And because of the low trophy count for these DLCs I get quite a bit of a leg up on that. Now there is going to be one key difference for the breakdown of this video compared with the guides that I made on the main game as well as some of my other videos for different games. I'm strictly going to be covering all of the trophies you can get in the best possible order regardless of their grade. In the main game's guides I broke down all of the bronze trophies in one video and then all of the remaining silver, gold and platinum trophies in the next and I feel like doing this here is going to be a little bit pointless for both you as the viewer and me as the editor and if I did structure it like this you would have ended up spending far too much time on this DLC before moving on to the next one. And if you're anything like me once you've played the entire game once you really don't want to be spending the next few hours playing through it all over again just to get that one sodden little trophy that you could have gotten hours before. Now like I said just a second ago, no waffling in this video, that's not what you've come here for. Let's go ahead and break down all of the trophies that we'll be covering in this guide for DLC 1 on Marvel Spider-Man and its New Game Plus mode. So in total there's going to be 9 trophies that we'll need to collect in both New Game Plus and in the Heist DLC. In New Game Plus we only have 2 trophies to collect, one silver and the other being bronze. And then in the DLC we'll be going for the main chunk of these trophies and there will be 7 of them to get. 5 of which are bronze, 1 silver and 1 gold. And like I just said a moment ago, we're not going to be worrying about collecting these trophies based on their grade. We're going to be achieving them in the quickest and most streamlined order. Starting things off with the 2 trophies for the New Game Plus mode called Power and Responsibility and One More Time. These two are going to be collected simultaneously as one requires that you beat the entire game on the the newly added ultimate difficulty and the other to do it through new game plus mode. If I'm honest I'm not a particular fan of new game plus modes I just don't personally see the benefit in them or the difference between that one and your first playthrough of the game but with this ultimate difficulty added to it it does pose a new challenge for players making it a little more interesting and engaging when playing the entire story mode again. And in terms of this game, you're not really going to be that bored when playing this story a second time around because you got to admit, this story is pretty banging, probably the best in any Spider-Man game there's been. But then getting into the main 7's trophies for DLC 1, the first 3 of them will be related to completing the main story for the heist involving Black Cat. And these are the kind of trophies that you'll get by just completing the story, they're pretty easy to get. These first 3 are called The Cat Came Back, Here Kitty Kitty and Bye Felicia. They're not difficult to do by any means, just as long as you understand the basic mechanics of the game like combat, gadgets and other simple features. You can get through these with literally next to no issues. But to give them a little more time in the spotlight for this video rather than just skimming over them entirely, I'm going to detail where and when you can get these ones done because these trophies are only tied to a few missions in the DLC. There are far more that you'll have to complete in this story but for the trophy related ones, these are just going to be some of the more pivotal missions that you're going to have to do. So going through them from start to finish in this video will help you a lot to know when we'll be getting these trophies and at what point you should achieve them. After which we'll then be looking at a trophy called the Long Con which is not too dissimilar from the previous three but it will require a bit more work. The aim of this trophy will be to find several different paintings across New York City for a police officer who's then later revealed to be Black Cat's father Walter Hardy. Sorry for the spoilers if you're one of the few people who haven't played this DLC yet and I'm sure that's only a few so please don't get mad at me. But yeah, once you've found all of these stolen paintings we'll then need to go through a couple of cutscenes to get this one done. Next we'll be looking at the first silver trophy of the game titled Screwy and for this one we'll have to complete every screwball challenge in the city and achieve at least a spectacular ranking in all of them. 
There's going to be five of them to do as a whole, but there's only three variations of challenges that you'll have to complete, and we'll get into what these are in a bit more detail when we reach this portion of the guide. Then the penultimate trophy for the DLC we'll be going for is titled Disorganized Crime, and for this one we'll have to complete every crime challenge in a singular district of the city. Like with the screwball challenges from the last trophy, for this one we have to complete five crime challenges in any one of the districts in New York, and what makes this slightly better in the long run, and especially for the final trophy, is that the number of districts has been reduced from 9 in the main game, and you only have 5 to select from in the DLC. The crime challenges aren't too difficult either, and so you can literally breeze past them once we cover what they are, and what we'll be doing for them for this trophy in this section of the guide. And then finally we have the final and only gold trophy of this video titled Seduced by the City, and for it we need to complete all challenges, crimes, and find all the collectibles in the city, as well as complete the entire story to basically get and complete everything in the DLC. This might sound like a lot now, but I can assure you that once we achieve all the other trophies that come before this one, we won't have that much that we need to get through when we aim to get this one done. So yeah, that's how everything is going to go down for this guide, and I'll make a note of this now before we move on. This is basically going to be the structure for the next two DLCs as well. So I'm going to be referring to this guide quite a lot when I make the videos on Turf Wars and Silver Lining, since they're virtually going to be all the same when it comes to a lot of these trophies anyway. So now with Without further ado, let's hop straight into the very first trophy for New Game Plus and the heist DLC in Marvel's Spider-Man. Okay, so starting things off with a trophy called Power and Responsibility, and for this one we're required to complete the entire game for a second time, but now on the newly introduced Ultimate difficulty. Now, like I said in the summary for these trophies, we're going to be combining this one with another trophy in the New Game Plus section, and this one's called One More Time. For One More Time, we have to complete a brand new playthrough of the story on New Game Plus, and so to merge the playthroughs of these two trophies together, when you enter the starting screen on the game after completing the story for the first time, you'll see that the New Game Plus option is available for you to select by pressing the square button. If you don't see this option, that'll mean you haven't completed the game at least once and this needs to be done before you can access the New Game Plus mode. But when you have selected this option, you'll see that a new slot in the game's save files will appear, and when you select this, you'll be directed to the difficulty screen, and it's here we can select the new Ultimate Difficulty option. Now you'll be able to play a singular run-through of the entire game on New Game Plus mode, but also on Ultimate Difficulty as well. Now like any other the new game plus mode included in a lot of other games, many of the unlockable items, skills and other elements like that will be carried over from your first playthrough of the game. In the case of Marvel Spider-Man's new game plus mode, all of the suits, powers, mods and everything in the skill tree that you unlocked in your first run through will carry over. And so you don't need to spend your time focusing on gathering all the different tokens in the game and getting them all back and things like that. Instead you can just blitz through the story and get these two trophies done a lot more quickly. Now when talking about the ultimate difficulty and how it works, the only main difference that you'll notice is the damage application of all the enemies in the game. They are slightly more powerful than easier difficulties, but if you already know how to nail down the combat in this game, and trust me, that ain't hard to do, then you'll virtually see and feel no difference between this and any of your previous playthroughs of the game already. Now the story is pretty damn long, but enjoyable to experience, but like any other game with a long campaign, there will be certain moments that you'll just want to steamroll past on your second go around, and those parts of the game will always be different for everyone, but regardless of this, when you have managed to get through the second run through of the story and the credits roll, you're going to grab yourself the first trophy of this guide called Power and Responsibility, and then straight afterwards you're also going to achieve the One More Time trophy as well. So, heading into the main portion of this guide for the Heist DLC, we're going to first go for a trophy called The Cat Came Back. For this one, we'll need to complete the Maria mission at the very start of the story. Now, this portion of the DLC will involve Spider-Man stopping a whole bunch of robbers and gangsters from stealing artifacts and paintings from a museum near Central Park. The first phase of the mission will be to take out all of the enemies patrolling the outside of this museum, and like a lot of other levels in this game, you're going to go about this by either using stealth attacks or dropping that act and going for a full frontal assault. In my run through, I went ahead and took out as many enemies as I could by stealth means, and then once I was spotted, I just finished them all off in regular combat. Once they're all taken care of, you'll next need to find an entrance to get inside of the museum, and this can be found by following the scratch marks leading towards the right side of the building. This will direct you towards a hole in a skylight that you can enter and here we'll move on to the next phase of the mission. Now that we're inside the museum, we need to gain access to the security booth, and in order to do this, we'll have to search for three individual thumbprints found on security equipment located around the museum. 
These items that you'll need to find will include a radio, a torch or a flashlight if you're American, and a book of crossword puzzles. Each one of these items is going to be carrying a partial thumbprint that will need to be used on the scanner to gain access to the security booth. And so once you've found a thumbprint on an item, just hover over it using the hood and press X to scan it. Returning to the booth with all three of these thumbprints, we can now use them to gain access to the security puzzle needed to enter the room. And personally, I cannot stand these things. I think they're so monotonous and boring and it doesn't even take that much effort to complete them. But for the sake of this video, I'll show you how this one can be done because we just have to get it out of the way and done with. So here it is and afterwards, We'll swiftly move right along. Time is unfair. Cause I know you're out there somewhere Patient waiting on nowhere Feeling like your grip might slip too soon now that you're inside, Spider-Man will reactivate one of the disabled security cameras and you'll need to visit the area that it's surveying. Once you arrive, the next cutscene will trigger where we're introduced to a painting that doesn't seem all that important at first, up until Hammerhead's goons arrive to steal it, and in typical Spidey fashion, you're gonna have to try and stop them. Very much in the same way we dealt with the enemies in the opening phase of the mission, you can either decide to take out as many of them as you can through stealth combat, or just jump straight into the action. Either way, you'll eventually be forced to enter a full-on confrontation with them, and this is going to be the main chunk and objective of this entire mission. Some of Hammerhead's mercenaries will try to make off with some of the paintings and sculptures, and you'll need to stop these guys from exiting the museum and avoid failing the mission. If even one of them escapes with something, you'll have to restart this phase all over again, and it does last for a considerable amount of time, a little longer than you'd really expect. But in any case, to be able to find any of these enemies that try to steal these items, a marker will show up on screen indicating their location. This marker will gradually change colour the closer they are to escaping the museum, and its colour is in a simple traffic light arrangement. So green means that they are a relatively safe distance away from an exit, amber means they're getting pretty damn close, and red means that you'll have to stop them at all costs, they are literally a stone's throw away from the door. Keep this up and defeat all of the enemies, and eventually you'll need to return to the painting, and this is where we're introduced to Black Cat in the story. She revealed why she's after the painting herself since it contains a data drive that she wants to steal, and this is also why Hammerhead is trying to get it as well. But during the middle of this cinematic, more enemies will arrive and you'll enter the final phase of the mission where you have to defeat this second wave of incoming enemies. This section of the mission lasts just about as long as the previous one, but instead of having to focus on enemies stealing items from the museum, you'll now just be in a full-on brawl with various different enemy types. Unlike the last phase where you only had to keep an eye on typical ground-based enemies, now you'll have to put up with brutes and others that are equipped with rocket projectiles. This phase won't be anywhere near as challenging as it might sound, because like I said pretty strenuously in the last two guys from the main game and at the very start of this video, combat is extremely easy to pick up after playing for about an hour or two, so really the only difficulty this portion of the mission has to offer is really just how long it lasts. And that's not too long, but also not too quick either, it's, it's kind of in the middle. There's something about the missions in the DLC that I didn't really enjoy too much, I think the pace was just a little bit off. Each section of a mission lingers a little longer than you'd really like it to, but never mind my grimaces for now, I'm saving that for future videos and ideas, let's just stick with the trophies. So once this final phase comes to a close, the ending cinematic for the mission will reveal that Black Cat escapes with the data drive, leaving you to venture back out into the city and progress on with the next mission in the DLC to find out where she went. And as soon as this happens, you should be rewarded with the Cat Came Back trophy. Okay, next up we have the Here Kitty Kitty trophy, and you'll begin the process of completing this one when Spider-Man catches up with Black Cat and one of the next few following missions. This one will start off with a staple of many different Spider-Man games, and that's a good old fashioned chase scene. Now, the majority of this mission is solely down to chasing Black Cat as she tries to escape the data drive from the last trophy's mission, and to begin this chase, you'll start off with a basic parkour section in the streets of the city. Eventually, when you're close enough, you'll be able to catch Black Cat with a web line, and then the following cinematic will take us into the next portion of the chase in a subway station. Now instead of using parkour like in the last phase, we'll next transition onto a web swinging portion of the chase, and this does drive up the tension of the mission a little bit in terms of like engagement and gameplay, because swinging around in such a narrow tunnel on this game is 
kind of frustrating, but in a good way. You can't really drive up any momentum in such a small space and pick up speed that way, so to swing faster and catch up to the train, you're forced to continuously spam the swing button, or you can even choose to web sit to try and stay airborne. Also about halfway through the subway tunnel, surges of electricity will start to burst through the walls, floor and ceiling to try and slow you down, and you'll have to avoid these as you're catching up to the train, and this is relatively easy. You are given quite a bit of time to react to these electrical bursts as well, since they won't appear until you're at least a couple of meters away from their location, so they're not going to cause you that much of a concern. But then after escaping the subway and catching up to Black Cat on the train, the next cutscene will lead you to a rooftop chase and the final phase of the mission. For this section, you'll have to chase after Black Cat again, and once you're at a close enough distance, you'll need to spam R1 to shoot impact webbing at her and slow her down. At the same time, you'll have to avoid stun projectiles that she tosses at you, and these are not hard to dodge at all. Much like any other object or attack in the game, once you see the spider sense alert pop above Spidey's head, you can anticipate what's coming and block it before it hits you using circle. So yeah, basically the entirety of this last phase will consist of you consistently catching up to Black Cat and webbing her up. And then eventually you'll be able to interact with her using triangle like in the parkour section at the very start of the mission. And then this will trigger the ending cinematic. Now in this cutscene, Cat will reveal her quote unquote true intentions for stealing the data drive from the painting from the very first mission in the story. According to her, Hammerhead kidnapped her son and she needs to take the drive as a bargaining chip to get him back. Now, the moment she mentions this, Spider-Man himself starts questioning whether or not he might, well, you know, be involved in some way. I am not the father of this baby. This baby got 10 different fathers, and I ain't one of them. You in the audience, you can be the father. Now, when I first played this DLC, I thought this was pretty funny, but I couldn't help but think to myself, like, you know, hang on, he he's 23 in this game, right? And I'm pretty sure at some point in the main story, he mentions, like, him and MJ had been together for a couple of years, and that they only recently split. So... Unless he was getting on with Black Cat the second she came back to the city, or even just after his breakup, then he's probably not the dad. And wouldn't you know it, not only not the dad, no kid either. You are not the dad. <laughs> Okay, so putting story threads aside for the time being, I feel like I'm nitpicking a lot of this. By the end of the cutscene, Spider-Man will allow Cat to escape, and then this is where you should grab yourself the Here Kitty Kitty trophy. Okay, so now next up, we'll be going for the trophy... Bye, Felicia. Alright, I'll stop doing that now, it's a dead joke. But yeah, for this one, we'll have to complete the final mission of the Heist DLC. The mission in question called Follow the Money will involve Spider-Man and Black Cat teaming up to collect the final data drive from Hammerhead's mercenaries in an effort to save... Well, quote-unquote save her son. You'll arrive at the docks with a bunch of shipping containers, and here you'll have to combine your own stealth abilities and takedowns with Black Cat as like an assistant NPC to defeat all of the armed guards patrolling this docking area. The moment that you start the mission, you'll be introduced to the mechanic that's used to control Black Cat, and how you can use her ability to take out some of the mercenaries that might be in a few tight spots which you won't be able to get to yourself. Now if you're spotted by any of the enemies in this area, you'll fail this first phase of the mission and will be forced to restart start it from the beginning. So what I've been able to do now for you here is show you how I managed to take out all of the guards in this section without being noticed, just to give you a little guidance on which ones you can defeat and when, so that way you have the lowest possible chance of failing this. I would say this is probably the most challenging part of this entire DLC, but given that everything is pretty straightforward in the game anyway, you know, given it's easy to grasp mechanics and missions, you shouldn't really have any trouble with completing this yourself after a couple of attempts. But for the sake of this guide, I'm going to leave you here with the gameplay and show you a lot how I steamroll past this. So here it is, and I'll be back shortly to continue on with the next phase of this final mission.
Okay, so now that you have all of the patrolling enemies dealt with, the next cinematic will lead us into the second phase of the mission where you have to locate and open several shipping containers to find the vault with the last drive in it. In total, there's four of them to open and you'll end up finding no vault at all, but instead a collection of Sable International weapons that Hammerhead has stolen. This is going to then lead us into the next portion of the mission where we'll have to fight off a few enemy waves that use these weapons against you. Now for this part, there are a couple of different enemy types to fend off and they do differ differ a little bit than what you've been used to up until this point. Some of them are going to be your standard enemies that we've already faced like ground soldiers and brutes, but now you're also going to have to put up with machine gun turrets atop of enemy vehicles and mercenaries with rocket projectiles. All in all, this isn't going to be the most challenging phase to complete, but you will have to be aware of every incoming attack in order to take out all of them as quickly and as easily as possible. The one enemy type that I would say you need to focus on will first be the vehicle machine gun turrets. I've said many times that the combat in this game is piss easy and I still stand by that, it still pretty much is. For some reason these turrets kind of omit that rule, they really have a tendency to kind of hit you when you're not expecting it. No matter how skilled you might be at beating the crap out of bad guys in this game, these turrets will eventually get the leg up on you at some point regardless of what difficulty you're playing the game on. So uh, yeah, get these things out of the way and done with first before focusing your attention on everyone else. But soon after all of these enemies are dealt with, you'll next have to make your way to the rooftop of the building just in front of you where the vault is actually located. Once you make your way inside, the penultimate cutscene of the main missions in this DLC will roll out, and it's here we get the stunning revelation that Black Cat has been manipulating Spider-Man and been lying about her son, her true intentions, and everything this entire time. Really? <laughs> I think everyone can see this twist coming from a mile off, but nevertheless, it's a good way to show how Black Cat operates in this game, very much in the same way as other Spider-Man media. So anyway, she'll end up stealing all of the drives, leaves with them, but then a couple of mercenaries arrive and reveal that Hammerhead has booby-trapped Cat's apartment, leading us into the final phase of the mission. You'll have to try and catch up to Black Cat before she falls into the trap by swinging as fast as you can back to her apartment, but given the design of the mission, you can't actually catch up to her before she opens the door, and the DLC will end with the teased death of Black Cat. So once this cutscene plays out, as well as the final cinematic of Peter and MJ reflecting on the events of the story, you'll be shoved back into the open world and shown the congratulatory message on completing the DLC's main story. And with that, you will also grab yourself the Bye Felicia trophy as well. So now that we have the main story out of the way and done with, we can now move on to the other elements in this DLC, starting off with the only side mission and collectibles for the trophy titled The Long Con. For this trophy, we're going to need to collect all of the stolen pieces of artwork located around New York City and deliver them to a police officer that you would have met earlier in the main story. This officer informs Spider-Man that the original Black Cat, not Felicia Hardy but instead her father, had stolen these paintings and hidden them all across the city and that the police have been trying to find them for literally years years. This is the basic setup for this entire side mission. Once you speak to the officer, the paintings and their locations would have been linked to your map of the city, much like any other collectible in the game. And before we can finish the side mission, 
we have to grab each and every one of them. I also want to quickly mention that given the way I've structured this guide, we should already be past the main story by now once we get to these last few trophies. So if you can't see any of the paintings on your map, that means you won't be at this point in the game yet, and the story needs to be completed if you want to get this trophy done. And likewise with some of the following trophies as well, but I'll get to those in due course. So now back to these paintings. They're not going to be hard to find by any means, you'll just have to travel to each one of their locations and use a combination of your spider sense and this little compass tracker on the left hand side of your screen to find a glowing object somewhere in the environment. You'll then just have to destroy this item by pulling it with a web line and then the painting will have been successfully retrieved. Now like many of the other collectibles in the game that I've covered in different trophies in the last few guides, instead of showing you in really unnecessary amounts of detail where each one is, I'm instead just going to list off how many of them there are and in which districts of the city you can find them in. Fortunately enough, the city has been merged into 5 districts for the DLC from the standard 9 that are in the main game, so there's not going to be that many to find and it's also going to save you a lot of time collecting them in the long run. So in total, you're going to have to find 10 stolen art pieces, this is including the one you would have grabbed for the police officer when you first start the side mission, and then the remaining 9 are going to be spread across the entire city. So when it comes to these paintings as a whole, you're going to find 2 of them in Greenwich, 1 of them in Midtown, 3 of them are going to be in Hell's Kitchen, two are in the Upper West Side, and then the final one will be in Central Park. Once you've gathered all 10 of these paintings, we'll be able to finish up the side mission by returning to the NYPD building, and then speaking with a different officer stationed there. This policeman will inform Spider-Man that the person who told him about all of these paintings doesn't actually work for the police, and that he manipulated you into gathering all of the paintings for him. And then it's at this point that it's revealed that the entire time you think you've been gathering the paintings to be safely stored away by the police, you would have actually been collecting and returning them to the old black cat himself, Walter Hardy. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I saw the black cat twist in the main story coming from a mile away because it's like a typical Felicia Hardy move, and I didn't really like the fact that I knew that it was gonna happen, but when this twist was pulled off in the side mission with her father, I, I thought to myself, Nigga, damn. Like, I remember when I watched the 90s cartoon as a kid and John Hardesky was Black Cat's dad, and there's a pretty similar storyline to this game's mission in one of the episodes. So when this twist came, I was pretty shocked, but at the same time, I was also like, okay, okay, Insomniac, I, I see what you did there. You really know what you're doing, don't you? I like it. I like it. This genuinely did come out of nowhere for me, and it just goes to show how Insomniac really delivered on this game's narrative and how they truly understand even just the finer details of Spider-Man's history and older stories. And as a huge, huge Spider-Man fan, I can say with all certainty this was done very, very well. So now to end this off, once the cutscene ends, you just have to wait a couple of moments and then the long con trophy should pop up for you. Okay, now we move on to the Screwy Trophy, and to get this one, we'll need to achieve a spectacular ranking in every single challenge set by the character Screwball in the entire city. Now, if you've seen the last couple of guys that I've made for the main set of trophies for this game, there are a couple of other trophies that are very similar to this one, and these are called Fists of Fury, Ninja, Short Fuse, and Spy Hunter. All of them are related to Taskmaster and his challenges from the main game, and for those trophies, we also needed to gain a spectacular ranking in each one of them. So when speaking of the Scree Trophy, this one virtually has the same structure and objectives as those Taskmaster challenges, but what's fortunate about the DLC is that there's not that many of them to do in comparison, and they're a lot easier to handle as well. The points requirement for gaining that spectacular ranking is quite low across all of these Screwball challenges compared with Taskmasters, but what you'll need to do for them is going to be pretty different. We initially had four variations of challenges set out by Taskmaster in the main game, which included bomb challenges, combat challenges, stealth challenges, and drone challenges, but for Screwball set in the DLCs, some of these challenges will carry over, but there's also going to be a couple of different ones that you haven't done before. The challenges that we'll need to complete for this trophy will include EMP challenges, gadget challenges, and the only one that will carry over from Taskmaster will be your standard combat challenges. So quickly now before I list off where you can find each one of these challenges in the city, I'm going to give you a brief overview on what will be involved in these challenges as a whole, both the new ones and old, and how you'll be able to achieve the spectacular ranking we need with next to no issues. Combat challenges are going to run in a very similar manner to the ones you would have already completed for Taskmaster's challenges. The way you gather large amounts of points will be mirror image, so elements like long combos, defeating enemies with different attacks and finishing moves, your health meter by the end of the challenge and how quickly you complete it, all of these 
these things are going to be the ways in which you get the most amount of points by the end of the challenge. But what's fortunate as well is that Screwball's combat challenges come with an additional method of gaining a serious amount of points. This feature will be a mechanic that allows you to defeat an enemy in a specific area of the environment and then snapping a quick picture of them using your camera. This is going to be an automatic feature so you won't have to worry about timing your attacks or anything like that. You'll just need to find the pink light source that will appear in different sections of the combat area, defeat an enemy in it and then take a picture of them. Now to gain the most points possible out of this mechanic you'll be presented with a progress bar that will load across your screen and then the moment the bar reaches the highlighted green section tap R1 to take the picture and this will give you the most amount of points for each photo. In these combat challenges I'd say to aim for these whenever they pop up, like make them your main priority because if you leave them out you do run the risk of barely missing out on that spectacular ranking that we need for the trophy. So whenever you see one appear just rush to its location, defeat as many enemies as possible inside of it, take your photos, rinse and repeat, bish bash bosh and you got your combat challenges sorted. Next we have the new EMP challenges and these are going to have you swing around different areas of the city whilst taking out pink generators with webbing and using the same photobomb mechanic and it carried over from the combat challenges. This type of challenge kind of reminds me of Howard's Pigeons from the side mission in the main game, since you'll be shown a very similar beam of energy that will guide you to where you need to travel and get you from generator to generator and photobomb to photobomb. Now once you approach one of these generators, you're going to want to spam the R1 button to shoot a barrage of impact webbing at it until it explodes and you can move right along to either the next generator or the next photobomb that's available. The photobombs are going to work in the exact same way as the combat challenges with the game entering the camera mode and presenting that loading bar on screen. And once the loading bar has reached that highlighted green section again towards the end, take a picture here to get yourself the most amount of points. Really there's nothing more to these types of challenges that can help you gain any more points other than these few mechanics, other than complete it in the fastest time possible. And out of all three of Screwball's challenges in the DLCs, these are by far the easiest to get the spectacular ranking in, so you're not going to have that much of a hard time doing these. Now finally, the gadget challenges are going to pit you against a series of enemies, much like the combat challenges again. But what's different now is that this type of challenge is going to wipe out most of your gadget slots and limit you to using very specific ones. Basically, the idea behind this challenge is that you need to utilize the gadgets that you're given to defeat enemies and use the photobomb mechanic once again in order to generate the most amount of points. Defeating enemies with normal combat isn't going to be enough when trying to get the most points out of this challenge and so you really need to get a firm grasp on what each of your gadgets do and how to use them effectively. Now when you first encounter the gadget challenges don't be too discouraged if you don't achieve the spectacular ranking right away. This one does take like one or two attempts to get used to compared with the other ones and to know how large amounts of points can be gathered quickly and easily. One of the pivotal features that you had to focus on in the combat challenges was to find a pink light source and defeat enemies inside of it to add the photobomb mechanic and this is also going to be your priority for the gadget challenges too but they are going to be a little harder to come by in this one. The light source to activate the photobomb feature is going to appear in areas that you won't be able to reach when defeating enemies in standard hand-to-hand -hand combat. Instead you're going to have to find where the light source is and use your gadgets that you're given to defeat enemies and trigger the photobomb. For example in the challenge that you're seeing on screen here Spider-Man is limited to using his suspension matrix and his trip mines and so to trigger the photobomb mechanic once the spotlight appeared, I used the suspension matrix to lift the enemies into the air and then the trip mines to finish them off and activate the photobomb. Now this won't be the only route that you can take to trigger the photobomb mechanic but getting it done using a combination of your gadgets available to you is vital for gaining all of the points that are needed for reaching the spectacular ranking. So really do try and aim for this tactic when getting these gadget challenges done. So now that we've briefly covered how these screwball challenges operate in this DLC, there are a few different ones in Silver Lining and Turf Wars but we won't worry about them for now. Let's just quickly list off all of the ones that are available in this DLC and exactly where you can find them. Fortunately enough, all five districts of the city only hold one challenge each, and so you'll be able to find two combat challenges in Greenwich and the Upper West Side, two EMP challenges in Hell's Kitchen and Midtown, and then a singular gadget challenge in Central Park. All in all, this shouldn't take you that long to get done, and so by the time you do gain five spectacular rankings across all of these challenges, you're going to grab yourself the Scurry Trophy. So next up we have a trophy here called Disorganized Crime and this will have you complete every single crime challenge in one of the five districts in New York. Now initially when I first saw this one I thought it was asking me to sync a district to 100% but fortunately this one's not that much of an ask. I mean synchronizing districts isn't that tedious anyway but for this trophy it eases the pressure off that objective a little bit and we only have to complete crime based challenges in one district to get it. Each of the districts in the DLC all have five third crime challenges each and so you'll just need to hang 
hang about in one of them and complete all of the crimes as soon as they appear. Now, for these challenges, they aren't going to be fixed like a lot of the other ones that you see on your map. They will pop up at random times, so the best way to find them and get this one done quickly is by just swinging around one district and just waiting for one to appear. This doesn't take too long, trust me, they virtually pop up one after another. Now, you do have to complete the DLC mission called The Trouble with Arson first before you can do any of these, but like I've mentioned before, we should have already passed that by now and all of them should be available to you by this point. These crime challenges are going to be in the same format from the main game but there is one small and I mean very small twist to them in that at least one of the challenges won't have you fighting groups of thugs stopping a carjacking and other things similar to that but you'll instead be tasked with completing a bomb challenge with your spider drone very similar to how these types of missions played out in the original story mode so yeah overall this one won't take you that long to do either and so once you spend some time just swinging about a district and cleaning up the city in typical spider-man fashion you'll eventually get yourself the disorganized crime trophy. Okay, so now we come to a trophy that's requirement is to 100% sink a district. Well, I'd say a district. We have to sink up every district in the city, as well as the entire DLC as a whole. Say what? The trophy called Seduced by the City will have you sync up all five districts in the DLC as well as finishing the main story and side missions. And we basically would have made some good strides on this with some of the previous trophies that I've detailed in this guide already. The main goal of this trophy is to complete every single challenge and collect every single collectible in the entire city as well as completing the entire story mode and any side missions that are available too. Now instead of just regurgitating all of the info that I just put into the last few trophies when discussing this one, I'm going to quickly list off all of the challenges, collectibles, missions and things of that nature that will need to be completed for this trophy. And then I'm going to show you a lot of timestamp on screen so that you can go back a little bit earlier into the guide and then finish off the necessary challenge, collectible and what have you. This is just in case you haven't watched the entire guide from start to finish and that you know what's going to be needed in full for this final trophy of the DLC. I will also just give a quick note about the synchronization of these districts. They will also mention backpacks and landmark collectibles. Now, if you've seen and worked from the previous guys for achieving the trophies in this game, you'll know that there are two other trophies related to both taking pictures of the city's landmarks and finding all of Peter Parker's backpacks, and this would have also been involved in the 100% synchronization of the districts in the main game too. These two collectibles aren't necessarily linked to this trophy since they're tethered to the base version of the game, and I'm pretty sure you can still sync the entire DLC and the city to 100% without them, but for the benefit of the doubt I will also be including links to these collectibles for this trophy too. Just in case by the time we get everything else done and seduced by the city potentially doesn't pop up for you, then this will be the reason as to why. You'll need to get all of the backpacks and landmark collectibles as well. So without further ado, here is absolutely everything that we'll need to get done for synchronizing all of New York City's districts and the other features of this DLC to 100%. Starting things off with the main story for the Heist DLC, this is a very simple and streamlined objective in that you just need to complete the story mode of this DLC from start to finish. There are a few more missions in the story that I've skimmed over for this video, since they're not related to any trophies in any way, but the ones that I have covered are worth having a watch so that you know what other trophies you will be collecting along the way. The next thing that you'll need to do will be to grab all of Walter Hardy's stolen art pieces which will coincide with the only side mission in the DLC called Like a Fiddle. There's 10 of them to find in total and the side mission has no real objective other than speaking with a police officer atop the NYPD station rooftop and this is also going to have its own separate trophy called the long con. Screwball's challenges will be another element that you'll have to complete and what's fortunate about the requirement of this trophy specifically is that you just have to complete them once and gain any rank. It won't matter at all about gaining a spectacular rank for all of them like we had to do for the trophy titled Screwy. Just as long as you gain any rank and you do this across all five of them that are available in the city. But if you do want a little bit of extra detail about these types of challenges that you'll be completing for this, they can always hop back to this point in the guide and view the screw trophy for a little more info. Now the only thing left to do from here will be to complete all of the Magia crime challenges that are scattered across New York. These will appear at random times when you're swinging about the city potentially doing other things like screwball challenges or finding collectibles, so the best way to go about getting this one done is by simply waiting for one to appear and then completing it before it vanishes from your radar. I detail a little more info about this in the disorganized crime trophy so go have a look at that if you want a bit more guidance. It's just that the only difference between that trophy and the requirement for this one is that you'll need to complete all of the crime challenges across all of New York rather than just one specific district. Now this should be everything, but just in case that the trophy didn't pop up for you by this point, 
the only thing that will potentially be remaining in the city are those backpacks and landmark collectibles. Now I'm going to assume that if you are playing the DLC that means you would have already played the entirety of the main game first, meaning that both forms of these collectibles will already be pinned to your map. I think the DLC is locked anyway until you complete the main game so that's going to make this point kind of redundant. But if I'm wrong about that and you can play the DLC first before completing the main story, then you won't have these collectibles linked to your map at all. So to help you find them, you can simply refer back to the first guide that I made on Marvel Spider-Man and find a trophy in this video called Sightseeing. And this will help you to gather all of the photos of New York City's landmarks. And then you can hop on over to the second guide I made for the silver, gold and platinum trophies and find one here titled Backpacker to gather all of the backpack collectibles too. Now I already mentioned how the districts in the city are cut down in this DLC from 9 to 5, so you'll only have to find the backpacks and landmarks that are in these particular districts, so don't pay that much attention to all of the ones that you aren't able to explore, I mean a lot of them are kind of much together anyway. So now this all seems like a pretty extensive list of challenges and collectibles, but trust me in the grand scheme of things you will not be putting that much effort into completing all of them. The majority of all of these elements would have already been done if you've gathered all of the other trophies that I've covered in this guide, so realistically that leaves you with only a few crime challenges left to do and also gathering the backpacks and landmarks and what's good is that they might not even count towards this trophy so you could get it a hell of a lot sooner. But with all that said and done this should leave you left to grab the final trophy in the heist DLC called Seduced by the City. There we are, quick and easy this one was, didn't take that long at all. Only, okay, well three weeks but that's good for me, very very good. Oh that's alright then, well done! But yeah, well anyway. The grind is seriously on now for these last few episodes of the series and I'm so adamant on getting this done now that I'm spending literally like the next couple of days just smashing out scripts for videos, recording commentary in like a matter of hours and then editing it all in just about under a week, maybe even quicker if things all go smoothly. Like a lot of you probably know by now, I've got a few things in the pipeline for the next series of Platinum Perfect. One of them potentially being a better title, who knows. I'm really trying to put my all into finishing off these last episodes before moving on to what I've got planned. I'm also really trying to get this done before the PS5 is released around Christmas time, because like when the PS4 and the Xbox One were first out around 7 years ago and I was like 13 or 14, <sighs> Jesus, that's a long time, I'm getting old. A lot of people were still playing the previous generation of consoles, but for only like a good few months and up until even a year before everything kind of booted over to the current gen and people mostly forgot or didn't really care about the older consoles. I personally think the lifespan of the PS4 and the Xbox One are going to stay pretty extensive when in parallel with the next generation of consoles compared with like their predecessors, but regardless of what eventually happens, everything will start to slowly and ever more transition to what comes next, and then these little buttes start to become more and more irrelevant. Now with that in mind, I've got so many videos planned, trophy guys to be made and much different content to put out before all of this happens and I want all of these videos to stay fresh for a good amount of time before people start to gradually lose interest with the older consoles and the only way that can happen is if I speed things up a bit. I've got an idea to do like a kind of nostalgia version of the series where I still do the same types of videos but just on older consoles and I don't just mean the PS4 and the Xbox One, I mean older consoles. And then whatever the current generation of consoles may be at the time, then that will kind of be like the up-to-date version of the series. It does all sound a little bit vague right now, but let's just leave this topic by saying I've got a plan laid out, I've got a contingency plan in mind just in case something falls flat, and I should still be able to make some unique and engaging videos from new gen and old gen consoles. I will briefly mention this in a little more detail in a recap video that I have in mind for the end of the series, so we'll save that discussion until then, but moving away from that topic for now so I can wrap this whole video up, I'm going to quickly go over the next few episodes we've got left before things kick off with series 2 and some changes are made. So the only guys left to be put out for Marvel Spider-Man will be for the Turf Wars and Silver Lining DLCs, and they'll all be out just as quick or potentially even quicker than this one. I did have a little bit of a breather before working on this video specifically, I have to be honest, but I think that's pretty justified considering I was trying to smash out uni and finish off my last video which was practically a whole fucking movie, so you know, I needed a little break. So yeah, we've got these two left to do and then all of the remaining DLCs on COD World War 2 and I've already expressed how eager I am to finish them off so I don't have to endure the pain of playing their game anymore, it's just torture, pure torture, but I've started it now and I'll be damned if I don't finish it. But that's just about everything covered for now, 
I'm going to get cracking on the next video for the Turf Wars DLC. So remember to do the usual thing. Like, comment, sub, share, all that good stuff. It would be very much appreciated. And also, all of the time slots for each of these trophies are in the description down below. This way you can skip to a specific trophy that you want to get to without having to watch the entire guide as a whole. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you all on the very next episode. In about a week. I promise. Alright? In a bit.